All right. Thank you. I Thanks and welcome to everybody. We are here for the series NOAA Science at Home webinar series. We have a great presenter, Dr. Um, Rios Barrios, is going to be talking to us about hurricanes today. Uh, she works and I just had this pulled up and give me one second. Um, she works in the mesoscale and microscale meteorology lab at UCAR in Boulder. Her research broadly focuses on tropical cyclones, tropical convection and numerical weather prediction. And with that, I'll let her take it away and I'll be sitting here monitoring chat. Please put in any questions you have to the Q&A and I will try to get those answered as we go. And um, I'll be putting announcements out for things that may be relevant to what she's talking about, but um, otherwise I'll let her run the show today. So thanks. Thanks for joining us, Rosamar. Thank you, Katie, for the introduction and thank you everybody for tuning in. It's a pleasure to be here today talking about hurricanes and we're starting with a question. Um, if you haven't answered it yet, you can go to menti.com and use the code above in this uh, slide and let me know, have you ever experienced a hurricane? So far, all of the answers are no, but We'll wait a minute and see if we have any other answers. I will begin by saying that my answer is yes. I grew up in Puerto Rico, as I will tell you in the next slide, and I experienced some hurricanes growing up, and that's actually what captivated me and motivated me to pursue a career in science. All right, so it looks like all the answers today are no. So. Here we are today to learn about hurricanes. Let's go ahead and, aha, uh -huh, we have some answers with yes. Okay, so we have some people tuning in who have experienced hurricanes and others who haven't. I hope you can all see my screen. Um, so my name is Rosemary Rios Barrios, as Katie mentioned, and Today, I'm just going to broadly be talking about hurricanes. And before I do that, I want to tell you how I got to where I am today. And I like to call this my track, studying hurricanes from Puerto Rico all the way to Colorado. So I grew up in Puerto Rico, which is an island in the Caribbean. Besides being a beautiful island with warm weather all year round, it's also an island in the path of hurricanes. So growing up, I noticed that Year after year, we had to be on the lookout for hurricanes, and sometimes the forecasters didn't know if the hurricane would come or not, if it was going to be bad or not, and that made me wonder, why can't we say for sure if it's going to happen or not? And why can't we predict if it's going to rain hard, if it's going to blow hard with the wind? And so that all of those questions got into my mind, but I should say that I didn't think I could be a scientist. I, I remember telling my dad, oh, science is not for me. And my dad was like, but science is so fascinating. And I was like, no, it's not for me. I want to be on TV, giving the weather forecast. But as I continued with my studies, and at first I went to the University of Puerto Rico at Mayaguez to study physics, I realized that I liked math, I liked computers, and so that took me into this journey of studying hurricanes. I went to the University at Albany for a PhD in atmospheric sciences, and later on I moved to the state of Colorado in the U.S. to continue a career in science studying hurricanes. And so here are some of the pictures of things I do as a scientist. Um, the top center picture is not what I do as a scientist, but it's just a picture that I like to show because I was the first one in my family to earn a doctorate degree and my family was so happy that they made an embarrassing <laughs> a banner for me that they displayed all around, but that made this event very special for me. But besides sitting in front of a computer, nowadays writing code to study hurricanes, I also get to fly in aircraft to collect observations of the atmosphere. I get to do a lot of presentations like the one I'm doing today, but also with uh, posters like you see in the bottom left um, to disseminate my research and tell other scientists what I found out about hurricanes. I also get to um, go into schools and give talks and teach uh, kids like all of you that are tuning in today about the science of hurricanes and other atmospheric phenomena. 
So a career in atmospheric science is very exciting, and I hope that if that is something that calls you, you go for it. So enough about me. Now let's talk about hurricanes. So let's begin with a question. What is a hurricane? Broadly speaking, a hurricane is um, a terminology that we use to refer to one of the many um, members of a family of atmospheric phenomena known, known as tropical cyclones. Perhaps you have also heard the words typhoon, cyclones, willy willy. They all refer to the same phenomena, but they just happen in different parts of the world. Hurricanes are the ones that happen in the Atlantic Ocean and in the Eastern Pacific Ocean, and that affect many of the Americas and the Caribbean Sea. More specifically, a hurricane is a low pressure system. The winds um, turn anti counterclockwise or against the clockwise um, in the northern hemisphere and clockwise in the southern hemisphere. And the hurricanes are accompanied by very strong winds, clouds, and heavy rain. So this schematic here is like a taking a slice through a hurricane, and it shows that the center is what we know as the eye, and it's relatively clear, and we can see it from images and photos taken from space. And around the eye, there is what is called the eye wall, and that's where we have the strongest winds and the heaviest rainfall. And around the eye wall, we have rain bands and other regions of also clouds and precipitation. Where and how do hurricanes form? Well, like I mentioned in the first slide, hurricanes happen all around the world. Hurricanes in particular form in the Atlantic Ocean, in the tropics, that's about 20 degrees latitude, more or less. And they can also happen all around the world. The typhoons form in the Western Pacific Ocean, cyclones form in the Indian Ocean and in the Southern Pacific, but they always happen during mostly summer and fall when the ocean temperatures are warm. How do hurricanes form? Well, that is a very interesting question and one that scientists are still trying to answer. We have learned a lot about hurricanes over the past couple of decades, but we still don't know what it takes for a hurricane to form at a precise time and location. We do know certain things, like the image in this animation is showing. We start with a group of clouds and we call that a disturbance. So there's usually a disturbance with groups of clouds that are happening here and there, but they are not very organized. And with time and with the favorable conditions, they may organize around a common center of circulation until forming a surface circulation. Once the forecasters are able to detect that a surface circulation has formed, they designate the system a tropical cyclone. As the system continues to intensify, it may become a tropical storm, and if it continues to intensify even more, it becomes a hurricane. Some of those necessary favorable ingredients that we know are necessary, but that may not be just all that is needed. First of all, we need a disturbance that contains clouds and precipitation. We need warm ocean surface. That's why uh, hurricanes form in the summer and fall months. We need sufficient water vapor because we need the clouds need that water vapor to condense and trans become clouds and continue to feed the system. And we also weak, need weak, weak wind currents. And by that, we mean that the winds should flow in the same direction and not much speed. Because if they flow in different directions, then some clouds may go in one direction, some clouds may go in a different direction, and we won't get that organization that is very necessary for a tropical cyclone to form. Perhaps you may have heard in the news that there is Hurricane Sally. Last week there was Hurricane Delta. There is Hurricane X or Y, and they have names. And these names are given so that we can identify the different systems, and so that if a hurricane is headed your way, you know which hurricane in particular is going to affect you. For example, this year we had a very, very active hurricane season. It hasn't ended yet, and at some point we had five tropical cyclones happening at the same time. And thanks to having the names, we knew which of those hurricanes went headed, headed which way. 
the World Meteorological Organization, which is an organization from scientists all around the world, is the one that decides on the names because they want to make sure that the names are appropriate for all cultures and all uh, countries around the world. But also, they are the ones that decide when a hurricane should be, when a hurricane name should be dropped from the list if a hurricane caused too much damage. What are some of the effects of hurricane? And here we're getting at why hurricanes are so destructive. Well, like I mentioned, hurricanes are associated with very strong winds. So perhaps you have heard and you're guessing that winds, very strong winds, cause a lot of destruction. And that is indeed the case. They can cause a lot of structural damage. But hurricanes also bring a lot of rain, which can cause flooding. Hurricanes can push the ocean waters inland and can cause inundation from something called storm surge. And hurricane can also cause other effects such as landslides or the movement of terrain when too much water has fallen and the trees and soil fall down the slope. So I'm gonna pause here and now I'm gonna ask you a trivia question. And you can put the question up, um, Nanda, and you get to answer um, all of you who are participating right now can get to um, guess. The question is about the effects of hurricanes. I already told you which are the effects, but now I want you to guess what do you think is the most devastating effect of hurricanes? Is it the winds? Is it the rain? Or is it the storm surge? All right, we have one vote for storm surge. Last week when we had Hurricane Delta approaching Louisiana, there was a lot of concern about the storm surge that the hurricane could cause. All right, we have a vote for winds and another for rain. You may have heard of Hurricanes Harvey, Hurricane Florence, and other hurricanes that have brought lots of rainfall to many locations, winds. We have another vote for winds as well. Last year, Hurricane Dorian caused a lot of devastation in the Bahamas to do the wind, but it seems like overwhelmingly the answer is storm surge. All right, let's go back to my presentation. And let's take a look at the answer. And you all guessed right. Water, not winds, is the most devastating effect of tropical cyclones. So this is a result from a study that looked at many, many hurricanes that happened in the continental United States, and they found that 49% of the fatalities that happened due to tropical cyclones happened due to the storm surge. And the second effect was rain. So while we hear a lot about the damaging effects of winds and the damage that they can cause to the structures, it is water, one of the most devastating effects of tropical cyclones and hurricanes. And wind comes in second. So you learned that tidbit today. And if you know that a hurricane is headed your way, please heed to your forecasters and their warnings because water can be very, very destructive. So now that we have learned about that, how do we know how strong a hurricane is? Well, the hurricane intensity, when you hear a category one hurricane or a tropical storm, category four, category five, that is all referring to the strength of the winds. So we refer to that as the hurricane intensity. And in this schematic here, we have uh, the five different scales. Um, they go from one to five. And as the number increases, the more destructive is a hurricane can be in terms of their winds. This doesn't mean anything about the rainfall or the storm surge because, for example, a tropical storm can bring in a lot more rainfall than a hurricane can. But the strength, generally speaking, refers to the intensity, with a Category 5 hurricane being considered utterly, dystrophic, utterly catastrophic and Category 1 hurricane being dangerous. Either way, both categories can cause a lot of destruction. We generally know how strong a hurricane when a hurricane is because we have 
um, aircraft that can fly into the hurricanes. And I'm not sure if you can see my video, but I have a prototype of a Hurricane Hunter aircraft here. If you cannot see my video, there is a picture there. These aircrafts are very, very powerful. They can fly into the eye of the storm and they can release instruments that tell us how strong the winds are. Now, how do we know our hurricane is headed? Generally, the hurricanes flow, go with the flow. So there's wind currents that span thousands of kilometers and they steer the hurricanes in a general direction. And you can think about it as if you were uh, tubing down a river. So you generally go in the direction that the river takes you. That is similar to how a hurricane moves, except it's a little bit more complicated because a river goes in just one direction, but the wind currents can change from one day to another. But generally, that's how hurricanes move with wind currents that span thousands of kilometers. Now that we're talking about hurricanes, maybe you're wondering what's going to happen in the future. Will there be more hurricanes? Will they be stronger? And unfortunately, we don't have enough information yet but we're working very hard to get to these answers. Some of the possibilities that scientists are pointing at is that we may be able, we may be seeing more category four and five hurricanes. So while we may not see more hurricanes overall, we may see more of the strongest hurricanes. We may see also uh, more devastating effects from rainfall and flooding, as well as a greater likelihood of deadly storm surge. And lastly, now that I have told you about hurricanes, you may be wondering, how do I study hurricanes? How I, Rosemary in particular, can study hurricanes? Well, at the National Center for Atmospheric Research, I use a very powerful computer. It is known as a supercomputer, and it's almost equivalent to having thousands of laptops like you have in front of you today. So thousands of them all together doing a lot of calculations. And that is what I use to create a virtual laboratory where I can simulate a hurricane like I'm doing it with this animation on the right. And here's a picture of that supercomputer. And I, that allows me to do different experiments where I change a little bit of uh, patterns here and there to see how a hurricane uh, behaves and what that can tell us about how hurricanes happen in the real world. And that is how I, in my job, study hurricanes. So that was all I had, and now I'm ready to take all your questions. Thanks for your attention. So I'm gonna stop sharing, and I'll give it to you, Katie. Thank you so much, Rosemar. So neat. What a great little introduction to hurricanes and how you study them and um, the science behind them. So uh, we did have a question come in that I want you to address first, but I want to also, yeah, to let people know to please put your questions into the Q&A and we'll be happy to um, ask them anything around hurricanes, science of hurricanes, or even um, what Rosemar does as a scientist day to day. Also happy to take questions like that. Um, the question that we had earlier on in your talk, Rosemar, was are hurricanes necessary? And we actually had um, a student respond to that that said they don't think hurricanes are necessary because they produce a lot of damage, the amount of damage from the winds and rain. Um, and I just wanted to see if you would address whether hurricanes are something that's necessary to sort of happen on the earth. Um, or if it's something that we could try to, yeah, I don't know, do something about. <laughs> yeah, so that's a very interesting question. With the hurricanes being a natural phenomenon, fortunately, we cannot do much about it. Um, whether they are necessary or not, um, it's, it's a very powerful question. So there are some thoughts that they bring some important uh, energy into the general circulation of the atmosphere, so they may be necessary from that perspective. But um, some hurricanes, even though they cause destruction, sometimes they can be beneficial because they can end droughts. So, mm -hmm. for example, there were some. There was a very bad drought in the state of Florida some years ago, also in the Caribbean. And then a tropical depression came in or another tropical storm came in and the rainfall, while potentially hazardous, it actually stopped the drought and it benefited the soils and the water systems. So while we wish that they could be just beneficial and not destructive, there's some 
benefits. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. I didn't know that. Thanks for sharing. Um, great. Uh, next question we had is, if the hurricane does not seem severe, how do they address that? Um, if they don't seem severe, well, we still need to take um, precautions. So even if you may think that, for example, it is, you can say, oh, it's only a category one hurricane. Well, it can still cause damage. So you, we also citizens still need to like take care of ourselves and take the necessary precautions to protect our lives and property. Yeah, but sometimes, right. uh, sometimes there are some hurricanes that are over the open water that they are not causing any hazards to land and we still need to monitor them. But in that case, we can focus our energy on the ones that are headed to land. So if they don't head to land, then um, you still monitor them over the ocean, but you don't put out forecasts and things like that. Um, or the hurricane right. center, I guess it's not you, <laughs> but they yeah. would put like a forecast out. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, they would still put forecasts, but we wouldn't use our resources, for example, our economic resources or our emergency managers and emergency responders. Uh, right. They can be, they can stay put. Yeah. And I think you bring up a good point with that whole category one versus other categories where remembering that that scaling is mostly just on the winds. And as you mentioned, the rain actually produces a lot of the damage. So just keeping that in mind in terms of that those categories can be misleading sometimes in terms of how damaging it really is. Yeah. Um, so how hard is it to detect that a hurricane is coming? So nowadays we have a lot of technology that we can use. Um, in the past, it, you know, it used to be that one day it was sunny and the next day some countries were experiencing hurricanes and that's because there was not enough technology. But nowadays we have technologies and we have satellites in space that are continuously monitoring what's happening on Earth. And with those satellites, we're able to detect in real time right now what's happening uh, over the oceans and with that we're able to detect um, when there are hurricanes. So the answer is nowadays we can very easily detect where a hurricane is. It's a little bit harder. Um, it's, it's easier to detect where a hurricane is than it is to predict where it's going towards, but we have plenty of technology nowadays available to detect where the hurricanes are. Great, thanks. Um, and then uh, the last question I've gotten in the Q&A so far, so please put any more in if you all have them, um, is what is the most rain that a hurricane can cause? Uh, wow, that's a very important question. Um, some hurricanes can cause as much as a meter of rain, so that's like almost up to here, right? Um, I'm, I, I am about five feet, four inches tall, so a meter of rain would be up to like my chest or so. So that's that's a lot of rain that can like fall and accumulate. Um, but there are there are some records that have established around the world where some hurricanes can produce even more than that, more than a, a meter of rain. So um, the easy answer is a lot of rain. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A lot, and we're not sure if there's a limit <laughs> on that. Yeah, that end. is yeah. right. That is a, a good point um, because that is in places that that amount of rain has been detected in places where we have instruments that can measure the rain. But it's possible that in some remote locations over the mountains or somewhere where nobody lives and there is no weather instruments to measure rainfall, there could be a lot more rain that has fallen and that we haven't detected. That's and true. also um, the amount of rain can be, propor can be um, proportional or can be, um, yeah, can be proportional to the temperatures of the ocean. So as the oceans continue to warm, it's possible, although not certain, that we may be able to see um, increasing rainfall totals from hurricanes. Great. Um, so this is a great question that came in. What is the difference between a hurricane and a typhoon? That's a very good question. The answer is there's no difference. <laughs> so a hurricane um, happens in the Atlantic Ocean, a typhoon happens in the Western Pacific. So uh, hurricanes uh, threaten us here over um, 
the Americas, in the Caribbean Sea, um, the islands of Hawaii as well. Uh, they get their name from the natives. Um, they had, um, there was the god of bad weather that was called Huracan. And whenever um, the natives experience a very strong winds and rainfall, they said Huracan happened, like Huracan sent their bad spirits and that's where the name came into. But um, for countries in Asia, they know the same, it's the same system, atmospheric system, but they know them as typhoons. Yeah, thanks. Um, so what's the biggest factor that influences the path a hurricane takes? Uh, the biggest factor is where the wind currents are flowing towards. And so um, Generally speaking, you might have heard things like there is the Bermuda high or there is a subtropical high or a high pressure system or a low pressure system. And all of those are weather systems that have air currents that span thousands and thousands of kilometers. And that's the biggest factor that controls the motion of hurricanes. Is that air, the movement of the air around them? That makes sense. Right, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So how long does a hurricane last typically? Uh, hurricane can last anywhere from hours to weeks. Um, so um, if there were no land, uh, a hurricane would last days and days. And um, if also the ocean temperature didn't um, become cool as we go northward, um, the hurricanes could last long and long. But because there is the ocean temperatures cool down as the hurricanes head northward. Also, hurricanes may touch land. Uh, they tend to die down. But if they were not, they could last weeks. And in fact, there have been some hurricanes that have lasted several weeks, like three weeks um, in the open ocean. What ways do you think we can reduce climate change so the intensity of hurricanes is reduced? That's a very powerful question. So anything that we can do in our daily lives to mitigate um, the effects of climate change is helpful. And that begins at home, um, taking your, 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 your own uh, strategies, like not using a lot of energy, turning off the lights when you're not using, um, when you're not in a dark room and you don't need the lights. Um, Recycling, composting, any measurement, uh, avoiding uh, not driving much, and also um, using the bicycle or walking, anything that can reduce all the fossil fuel emissions helps uh, to mitigate climate change. And anything that we can do to mitigate climate change can also potentially help to mitigate the threats from hurricanes in the future. Yeah. That's a really good point. Um, so what things should you have to be prepared for when a hurricane comes? So it depends a lot on where you live, but um, you want to make sure first and foremost that you are safe. So if you live very close to the water, if you live somewhere where you get an evacuation order, you need to leave. Like you cannot so-called ride the hurricane there. Um, you need to take care of yourself first and foremost. And second, you need to take care of your property uh, and your um, belongings. So when it comes to wind, you need to protect the windows, you need to protect doors. Um, if it is a wooden structure, you need to use, um, in, you need to use, for example, in, in Puerto Rico, we use cable around the house so that it can like, hold it together. There's other, um, other materials that you can use. Um, and if you live in a flood zone, then you need to make sure that your belongings are high so that they do not get damaged by the water. All good tips. Um, I have a great question. What does it look like inside of a hurricane? That's a good question. So interestingly, the hurricanes that I experienced growing up always happened overnight. <laughs> So I couldn't see much and I was also hunkered down. Our windows were covered with uh, wood panels and I couldn't see outside. Um, but based on videos that some storm searches, some storm chasers have captured, um, it looks like 
there is rain, but it's instead, you know, when you see a rain shower, usually the rain falls this way, like from top to bottom, and you see it falling. But inside a hurricane, it's just all horizontal because it's being it's falling still to the ground, but it's being swept away by the strong winds of the hurricane. Depending how strong a hurricane is, you may not see very far. It may be similar to when it's foggy that you could not see very far from where you are. Um, but what I will say that I do remember vividly is that the sounds of hurricanes are very terrifying. It sounded like people were screaming outside, but it was just, it was the wind. Um, it, it, there were no people screaming outside, but the winds from hurricanes, once they like crash into the uh, structures, they can sound very, very loud. And I know we're just a minute over um, our time here, but there was one more question. Oh, a couple more came in. Um, it, would you mind just answering this one? How fast can a hurricane go? And then um, we'll maybe wrap it up. And, and if you have a few minutes, Rosamar, that you could stay on to answer these last couple of questions that came in, is that possible for an extra five or so minutes? OK, great. Um, so let's add, answer how fast can a hurricane go, and then I'll sort of wrap it up, and we can answer a few more questions here. So a hurricane can go as fast as if you were driving your car on uh, on a road. Um, perhaps not as fast as if you were going on a highway, but um, let's say if you were driving uh, on the road um, from towards town, um, that's how fast a hurricane can move. And some hurricanes actually move as slow as if you were walking, actually. So that's, wow. that's the range. Um, some of them can like become almost stationary, but that is more rare. So somewhere in between the speed at which you walk and the speed at which you drive um, in a neighborhood road. Wow, that's fascinating. I didn't actually know that. Um, thank you so much, Rosamar. I'm just going to let everyone know we're at 1.32 here, so I know we plan this to be a half an hour. If you need to leave for anything else, I wanted to let you know that um, we are just going to answer a few more questions and you're welcome to stay on. Um, please join us. Um, our next one of these is going to be next week, um, and I will put the link to our, um, our program in the announcements here, so please um, check that out. I also wanted to put in here, if you're interested in learning more about hurricanes, I found a page on NOAA that um, goes into it a little more and has some activities or lessons you can try it on your own as well. Um, and then the last thing for Jack, who wanted to know what it looked like inside of a um, hurricane, um, I was also thinking I could try to, um, Oh, I can't do it though because I can't share my screen because I, um, anyways, I found a picture of one of the eyes from the hurricane hunters, but I think you showed it in your slides earlier too, Rosamar, in terms of, mm -hmm. so at the ground you were describing what it looked like and I was just going to show a picture from above, but I can't mm -hmm. share my screen right now. So um, maybe we'll do that later. So thanks everyone for joining us. If you want to stay on, we'll answer a few more questions from Rosamar here about hurricanes. So um Let's see, uh, the one that came in after the last one was, is it possible for two hurricanes to intertwine? Yeah, it is possible. So there is something called the Fujiwara effect, and that's because that, that was the, the person that studied it many, many years ago. Um, the last name was Fujiwara. So that what happens is you have one hurricane here with the winds blowing in this direction. There may be another hurricane here with the winds blowing in this direction. And they may actually like move around each other and at some point um, one of them may become very powerful, the other may like weaken and they may become only one or they may like um, combine into one and yeah, they they, they could um, like play with each other. It's, it's rare and here's my cat who wants to learn about her. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. Um, yes, I've seen it, but it is very rare. Yeah. Um, so, what was the most dangerous hurricane to have existed? If you know, do you know the history? Um, I my memory is calling me, but um, there have been many like category five hurricanes, and that's the highest of all the categories, and those are the most powerful hurricanes that can happen, and they can happen all around. Um, 
not just in the Atlantic, but also in in the Philippines, for example, they have happened like Typhoon Haiyan was very, very powerful. Yeah. And it always depends how you're measuring these things in terms of the strength of the hurricane itself versus like the damage it caused and things like right. that. So it's hard right. to really know the answer to that one. Yeah. Um, is it true that the eye of the hurricane is calm? Yeah, that is very true. So um, around the eye, there is like very heavy rainfall, very strong winds, but the eye is calm. Uh, and that's because in the eye, like there, there are no clouds, the winds um, vanish. And if you were standing inside a hurricane and the eye were to come and you were to like look outside, although I do not recommend it because you, you should be inside and be um, and be like taking care of yourself. If you were to like look outside, you would be able to see potentially like the sky or maybe some very light clouds and that's because the eye of the hurricane is very very calm so yes and it that, is very true and that's part of why they can fly into them and study them is that right am i right about that yeah that is right because they can like go across the eye wall go into the center and in the center they can be able to try to find where exactly the center is and then they can go on the other side of the eye wall and that can be very dangerous because they are going back to where the strong winds are. But yes, that, that's why they are able to go in into the center. Um, somebody asked, can all hurricanes be cold or hot? And so I'm thinking they're asking about temperatures. Is there like a specific temperature that the, do these tend to run hot or cold in the hurricanes? They tend to, to run hot. So the in this eye of the hurricane and if you were to go um, up in the atmosphere you would measure a very warm temperatures so hurricanes are, are warm and can a hurricane split in two i don't think so so um yeah i don't think so <laughs> i don't think that that's possible yeah i you're obviously the 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 expert here, but I've never heard of that, whereas I have heard of the merging effect like you were mm -hmm. talking about before, yeah. but not splitting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That happens in other types of storms, but I've never heard of it in a hurricane either. So if you don't, if you've never heard of it, I would doubt it. <laughs> yeah. So um, for example, the there is something called a supercell, which is what causes uh, in some instances tornadoes. So those can split and become two, but not hurricanes. Um, can hurricanes cause droughts or floods? Um, hurricanes can cause floods because they can bring a lot of rain. Um, they do not necessarily cause drought, but they can stop a drought. So a drought means very, very dry conditions, very little rainfall. That's what we are experiencing right now in the state of Colorado, for example. And if the hurricane comes and brings in enough rain, it can be enough to um, make the water levels go up in our reservoirs and it can make the soil um, wet enough or moist enough to like help the plants. But um, in terms of causing a drought, that's, I have never heard of that. So I don't think that's possible. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think so either. Well, I think those, oh wait, one more just came in. Um, <laughs> someone said, can we see the cat please? <laughs> <laughs> I think she jumped down. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> She's very cute, though. Maybe we can get to see her while we wait to see if we have another question. <laughs> yeah, one more came in. Um, how does a hurricane stop? So a hurricane can stop um, either because it runs out of fuel. So its fuel is the uh, um, heat from the ocean. So if it moves over cool ocean water temperatures, it can um, the hurricane can like weaken and stop. Uh, it can also happen once it moves over land because there's not as much energy as over water, but also if the wind currents become too strong or they start to blow in different directions as we go in the atmosphere, then that can also cause the hurricane to stop or to weaken and um, we call it dissipate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And here's the gut, let's see if we can. 
Oh, no. She doesn't want to. Doesn't want she it. Learned That's a, all right. She learned enough about hurricanes. She <laughs> She's <whatever>. happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that's great. Um, and then they asked, how does a hurricane start? Which I think you described a little bit in your um, slides, but would you mind just kind of revisiting yeah. that a bit? Thanks. Yeah, sure. So um, generally they start from uh, a disturbance or a group of clouds and precipitation that are happening um, somewhere. So for example, a lot of them start over Africa where there's like this clouds and precipitation that are happening um, in different locations and they may like organize or they may like evolve in such a way that the clouds and precipitation go from happening here and there to be happening all close together and then that can um, lead to the formation of a hurricane. Great. Thank That's you. generally what we know. I yeah, say. right. Okay. We don't know all of don't the... Open question yeah yeah don't know all the details of that but that's a great summary so thank you so much um and i haven't seen any other questions come in and i think um we might have closed it down but um feel free to reach out to us if you have any other questions we can pass them along and answer them through email as well we're just trying to make sure we stay somewhat on time here so um with that i want to thank you so much um dr rios barrios for joining us and talking about all this today and um yeah it was really really neat Obviously, people have a lot of great questions around hurricanes, oh. too. So thanks, everyone who joined us mm -hmm. and asked your great questions. And um, yeah, please reach out if you have any other questions or thoughts around this that you'd like us to communicate um, to Rosamar, and we'll try to do that for you. So yeah. thanks, everyone. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and for the great questions. And throughout my slides, I had my email. So feel free to email me if you have questions about hurricanes, career, science, anything. There you go. Great. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.